So, this intake's process, you should also pay attention to, in a way, how the client is positioning themselves in the narrative. It will give you an inkling as to the structure of their personality. Some people are very egocentric and it's all about them and their feelings. Other people are the complete opposite. They cannot look at their own feelings or their own part in it. They will only look at how they disappointed their parents or their partner or their children and completely ignore themselves or their own needs. When you're in a way looking at how a person is relating to the story, it also gives you an inkling of as to their sense of responsibility for it. Do they consider themselves to be a victim, a person to whom things happen, or do they consider themselves to be an actor, the person who causes things to happen? How do they relate to failure? Is it like, well, okay, I did something and it had an effect, it just wasn't the effect I was looking for, but well, I keep on doing things until I do get the effect I'm looking for. This is a very positive attitude. It can also be a very negative attitude, like oh, it's just not meant for me. Why don't things ever work out for me? <laughs> I'm doomed. Am I cursed? Uh, attitudes like that will also tell you a lot about the type of personality you're dealing with. And often the personality type really defines the type of problems the person will be experiencing. If the person is a little bit manic or optimistic, um, the biggest problem tend to be in judgment errors and also not going too much in depth. They tend to have too high a speed, they tend to think they can solve everything, they can manage everything, and they tend not to take enough time to realize problems or to really um, give other people enough space to really listen to their emotions, to adapt themselves to other people's feelings or problems. Because they ignore their own problems, they tend also to ignore other people's problems. Like, okay, that wasn't so bad or it's over with, so why are you still complaining? Um, and the opposite is true of people who have a more pessimistic or victim attitude. Um, their biggest problem is that they don't take appropriate action. They don't feel empowered enough to take appropriate action. And they in a way are counting on luck or some outside force to save them. And often they project this external savior onto either their partner, their boss, their colleagues, uh, you, and whenever they're not happy or life is not giving them what they would like, they don't look at themselves, they just blame it on the therapist, their boss, um, without really realizing the situation they're in. Often a person who's more pessimistic or depressive, like even though they're highly intelligent, they're often not very able to make very good judgments of the situation. Some people might also be paranoid, they, um, and paranoia is very different from a victim attitude. A victim attitude is a relatively passive attitude. They think that yeah, things happen to them and they just have to accept that things happen to them. They will be unhappy about it, but they're not actively avoiding them or resisting them. For a paranoid person it is very different, because even though they see a lot of forces arrayed against them. Um, they don't take a passive attitude at all. They try to protect themselves, they try to counter the threat to prepare for problems. And um, the biggest issue is not that a um, paranoid person is not constructive or not smart or not um, taking care of themselves, but rather that it is never enough. Because the 
idea of being persecuted always prevails and ultimately um, since everything is considered a threat the person is always without help without resources always alone and this being alone in a way reinforces their uncertainty reinforces their fear that they cannot rely on anybody and that they're in a way at the mercy of a big hostile world and they have to be strong and take care of it themselves which often leads to a lot of stress and stress related problems and issues when you start looking at the world from the client's perspective you also start developing an understanding of their problems because things which to you might not be a problem or which to you morally might be right or wrong can be completely different from the client's perspective and it's also important to realize that there are cultural differences there's age differences generational differences um, there are sexual differences and there are subcultural differences and if you go talking about past life experiences then you have a whole other array of things. There are times where, in a way, uh, what we would now consider terrible crimes like murder and uh, slavery, um, uh, corporal punishment through mutilation to be horrendous crimes. But in those times they were considered to be proper and normal, just like slightly unpleasant, similar to paying taxes is now and who knows, maybe a thousand years from now people will look in the same way at yeah, how we are forced to fill out our tax papers and keep an administ financial administration for our businesses as being cruel and unusual punishment slavery, who knows so everything has to be seen from the right perspective and the only right perspective here is not an absolute truth or an absolute goodness because all these things only exist from the perspective of the client if to them something is good or if to them something is bad they will experience it in that manner and sometimes this needs to be reprogrammed they might need to change their paradigm their way of looking at the world the way of looking at their own actions um, to develop a higher perspective and maybe to realize that they are seeing things from a cultural perspective and that their perspective is in a way what is causing them to be stressed or have problems with things which other people are completely fine with so the intake will really help you to see things as your client sees them and to experience what situation your client finds themselves in and on the one hand we need to be able to go into that to understand but we also need to be able to relate the client's experience to our own views to our own standpoint so because if we over identify with the client then we're both in the same situation and we both don't know how to proceed so it's important to be able to go into the client's narrative but also to go out of it and to look at it from your own perspective and to switch between the two and also take your time to do that take your time to integrate it to learn to translate the client's narrative into your own internal models and it's okay to take time for that and what i often do is also ask for a little bit of time to write down some notes and the notes I'm writing down are not because I really want to remember stuff or to do things like that, but also to give myself just time to process things, to think about it. And sometimes I just also ask for a little bit of time by, in a way, buying time by saying, would you like another cookie, would you like a cup of tea, or um, sorry, I need a little toilet break even. And then you can digest what you've just heard and once you've integrated that you'll be better able to integrate the, fu the future information which will come to you so don't try also to take in the entire 
narrative of your client in the first session. Give yourself time because often it will typically take about four to six sessions to really get to know your client. So space out the intake process over those first couple of sessions and build up the understanding and the contact between the two of you. Um, if your client is finding it hard to talk about certain things, it can be helpful if you share yourself. So you don't want to, in a way, reverse the roles that you start sharing your life and they have to counsel your problems, but just opening things up, like if they are from a culture where there are lots of sexual taboos you can talk about, your own sexuality, or um, if there are taboos about extramarital relationships, you can share a little bit your views, or if that's too personal, just talk about it in general. You can also just say like, okay, different people have different norms, there's also people who think like this or who feel like that. And there you prevent the conversation from focusing on you while still giving an opening and in a way enabling your client to share things by just addressing the taboos and in a way diffusing the situation by showing that you're an open-minded person, you're not going to judge them on this. And this is of course only possible if you have a client who's not looking for judgment, because there are also clients who are looking to be judged, who want to be told that they're good or who want to be told that they're bad. Well, if they want that, then it's also possible. It can also be very beneficial for them to give them that. But you have to realize really what the client is looking for. Most clients are looking for openness, ability to share, room to breathe. But some clients are looking for that strictness, that fundamentalism, that clarity. Because that clarity can make things a lot easier also. You don't have to think, you just have to follow. This is right, this is wrong. Uh, this is good of me, this is bad of me. And um, in the short term, these things tend to help and give a lot of power. On the long term, it tends to lead to, to repression and ultimately inability to follow the demands, which usually surfaces only after a few years. And after those few years, people will tend to get a very negative self-image because they will consider themselves to be evil or ungood or unworthy because they're not fitting into the framework of that system and there ultimately is no system which will fit a person. Um, rules can be right for 80% of the time or even 90% of the time but there's always things which won't fit into it. So it is important of course to have a system and to have a framework but also to realize how much personal space, how much flexibility there needs to be because depending on the person's skill and the person's ability they will be able to do things right the first time or maybe the 20th time and in general a person will need to make a mistake at least three times before they develop the skill to learn to deal with it you can't expect yourself to do things right the first time this is completely unrealistic so talk to a person and they've made a mistake three times, well by then it is time to have learned from these mistakes and to stop doing it. And if they do it a lot more than three times, yes, then you can maybe say like, okay, we really need to focus on it, you need to be more disciplined, you need to be more, put more effort into it. But try to manage their expectations to a realistic level. So, this is the story about the intake, and now we will move on a little bit with how to plan the rest of the uh, treatments.